Hi, and welcome back to our galaxy. Um, that did take a little longer than I thought it would, so my phone shut off. Um, so we're just gonna have two videos. I figured it would do that. So um, now that our paint's good and dry, um, as you can see, it's it doesn't have a lot of detail here. I mean, this has this is spectacular right here. And when I was using the blow dryer, it kind of um, jiggled this paint and made it go up in the air. So oh, we have a lot of good technique here. Um, what you can do to this is use your colored pencils right on top of your paper. And I'm using my Artesia. This is like a navy blue. Um, this is our classics. And in their classics, they don't tell you what the color is. You just have to eyeball it. So um, I'm using this on another space scene right now. So I know that this is this is going to match this blue. Um, I have my white quartz and I have my violet. I'm not touching my hot pink because, well, it did really well. So this is where you can go in and add a little bit of detail in there. Um, we'll be using our toothbrush this time and our pencil and our um, template here because I want to add maybe a planet uh, somewhere. Okay, now this is the detail part of this video, so this part may take a little longer than the painting. Um, you need a really good sharpener for your pencil. Um, I bought this little dandy, uh, it's called Magnesium. Uh, got it on Amazon for a couple bucks and it sharpens especially your Artesia pencils. Um, they have a soft lead just like the Prismacolor, but not so soft that every single time you sharpen a pencil, it breaks. There's nothing more irritating to me than trying to get my pencil to a really sharp point because I need it that way. And the lead breaks off down underneath the wood part of the pencil. Pet peeve, numeral uno in making art colored pencils that break. I have bought so many colored pencils trying to get away from the Artesia. Um, now, this is going to color a little bit different. If you're using Strathmore, it's a lot more textured. This is a lot smoother paper. So what you're going to do here, um, you're adding in the shadows with the blue and the purple, and you're going to touch up your highlights a little bit with your white. Um, and you could doctor these little planets if you wanted to add a little bit of uh, like some texture to these. This looks like a, this must have a volcano on this or a big asteroid hit this. So we're going to kind of highlight that a little bit in this planet. He's had some damage. Uh, edge of this one so that white area shines and this is going to be your light source in this picture so if you're doing things on either side then these sides of your things want to be whiter and these sides want to be darker so you want to get a good shadow on your planet here and this is a uh, this is kind of falls under the fantasy art so whatever you fantasy this is you just draw it how you see it so I have a darker edge around this just a little bit here and make those white spots really stand up off the that one almost looks like it's sticking off of the circle take our white and uh, highlight around this edge give it a lot more white he's got a great aura going on around him so I 
and I think I want this. The inner cir circle of that has a little dark spot, but I want a little bit of white in there to make it stand up off the colors. And there's one little planet all done. He was already just begging for some decoration there. Um, this looks like it might not be totally dry, so I'm not going to hit that too hard with the pencil, but I have found that if you go in here where your light spots are and put a little bit of dark underneath them, because this is in the foreground, that's in the background, it really will pop out those white spots without much pencil. This has this fantastic little starburst here. Another thing about pencil and watercolor, like when you put the watercolor on the paper, some of your watercolor stands up above some of your other watercolor and when you run your pencil over it, it colors the taller part of it, but like the part that's sunk in, it doesn't get the color in there. So you end up being able to have those little details. As you can see, they kind of pop out right there. And this is these darker spots in here, really darker. I'm not going to do much to those because oh, I don't know if you can see how cool they look, but they are really, really cool in detail. And I want those spots really to stand out above everything else. to that um, right on the edge down here and I'm barely pushing on the paper because I want the white but I don't want it to uh, be too strong and take over that little spot right there because it's kind of cool um, let me see let's get some of this cloud right here maybe going around this pink and give it a little more, a little finer detail here. Any space scene that you see that I have drawn. Um, I need a lighter blue in here. I think it's this one. Any um, one of these that you've seen me draw, if you follow my art, I do use colored pencil in about all of them because it really gives you lots of uh, texture and depth and you can really enhance colors that didn't, they made a really cool spot, but they didn't really make it uh, as detailed as you want it, so you can get a lot more detail in there, and you can get a lot better shadows and highlights. And sometimes it doesn't take much to get it to look really cool. This one almost looks like a fireball. Got a little tail over here. As you can see, sometimes just a little bit of darkness in there really will make a spot stand out. I think 
over here. This kind of goes off like this, so I want to get a little bit of a darker edge right here. It kind of has this kind of shape in there. Um, probably can't see it from the camera, but and this needs a little more white to it to make it really pop out there. And you can go over these little something just hit this planet and it's in the process of exploding I'm not sure what that one is but this is how you just work in all your details um, this a little bright and blue over here I just happen to have all my pencils just laying here so a good thing. Let's put the world out in with that. Let's get that spot a little bit wider right there. And add a little bit here with this blue because that color right there is really milky so This right here needs to be really highlighted because it's like got all these little arms going out here. Let's add a little bit more light source to that one. And in that previous video, I was showing you the water drop. Um, I'm move my paper over because y'all can't see what I'm doing here. This is that water drop that dropped on there and I told you it was going to end up looking really cool. Well, now you have a comet over here that we're going to make flying through here. He's pretty white hot, so let's get some white on here. Now if you have a spot like this that you want that edge to be really hot you can use your gel pen and go in there and add some some white to that and then when that dries I'll show you a trick with it um, this end kind of wants to be lighter, and we want to get this highlighted around it because it's got some really cool tail area. And again, as you can see when I'm putting this on, it's not coloring over the stuff that's like underneath, so... Some bright blue in this right here. I'm really gonna pick up on this little comet over here. Okay, now take your white pencil where you did your white here, and if you go back over it, it kind of turns that powder to white. I mean, that white to powder, and it's not so. Um, streaky looking. You don't want to push too hard or you'll knock all of that off there <sighs> and you won't have that little bit of highlight there on the edge. But now you have a really cool comet. Um, so anyway, I could go on for hours um, adding texture to this, but we want to get to some of these planets and I want to show you how to do a planet. So um, I love these on their own. I think they're super cool when they turn out like this. I feel like this guy, um, he's kind of front and center, so we're going to give him a bit of a ring. Now, when you do your ring, you want to come out, and it is an elongated oval, so you want to do this. 
um, and then kind of just, you don't want it to be like taking over the hole. You want to be able to kind of see through it. It's gases, so you want it to be, this needs to come out a little more over here. Uh, he's kind of got a little bit of a ring there. Um, you can go in here and add details to some of these other ones. This one looks like it's a little bit more blue, so... He's also got a big... He's been hit hard, too. On this one, really close up, he's got like a bunch of little... I don't know like islandy looking things here. So we'll just blend that all in. Blend your white up into your blue there. And then he's really light around. So we're gonna add some more white just to highlight that. And I think he needs a dark edge also. I know I just told you your light source is on this side of the planet, but I just want him to have, like, a really dark edge. And this will be his shadow area over here. And this will be his light area over here. So, just go right back over that blue, and then you have a, you still have a dark edge even in your light area. This one has some really cool little patterns where the, the water dropped on it. I'm really just going to highlight his whites and I'm going to use a little bit lighter blue to do his shaded side over here. And I'm just letting the pencils do what they want to do on top of the watercolor because it's picking up all the texture of that. Um, I think this is one of those that they talk about, one of those stars that's trying to become two separate deals. And those are generally really bright in the sky. So we're going to brighten these guys up a little bit. Here where they're nebula. Is that what they're called? Nebula. He's got some really cool little, maybe these are their moons that are trying to develop here. I don't know. I always have to, uh, that's all I'm going to do to that one. Um, I want to put in my planet now. I'm really trying to decide where I want one. Um, I really kind of want one up here that's behind this area but I don't really want to ruin that area so we're gonna put it right there I believe and I'm going to this pencil is really hard to see on this blue but I'm going to put it in behind my effects here You can use anything to draw your circle. You can freehand it if you feel comfortable with that. You can trace a lid, whatever. Okay, it's really light in there. Okay, this is where we're gonna use our white gouache. Um, you also can use white watercolor. It's going to pick up the blue paint that's behind it though, so you wanna be very careful. I'm also using um, gray and black in this planet because I want it to be kind of like our moon and be have like gray colors. Um, gauche is like a really chalky watercolor and you can adjust how it goes on by how much water you add. Uh, this is where I'm going to use my little tiny detail brush. I now have here do not have any clean water. As usual, I have blue water and I have purple water. So I'm going to use my spray bottle 
And what I do, let's see if I can do this without getting more paint on my, to show you. I just uh, spray next to my colors. I bet you can't see that. So I put my water next to my colors so I can then put how much water I want in that. If I want it running, I can put more. And if I want it kind of uh, a little bit drier, I can use less water. So I'm going to start here with white. Some of these I like to just do a white, really runny white edge on those so that you get a real good crisp edge on part of it and then it kind of just blends in with, and that may be where we go with this. Um, I don't really know yet. So I'm going to just put this on. Gouache paint dries really quickly. And I have a fan going on in here so I could get that dry earlier. So this may be a challenge to get this the way I want it to look. And when you use gouache, um, if you use it on itself, it will pick up, um, it will reactivate. So if you're using it over another color, you will start getting blending. So if you're using um, just gouache in your painting, you want to work quick when you're having to go back over stuff because you will pick it up and it will reactivate this watercolor a little bit here so you may end up with a blue tint to your white which that's okay As you can see, I'm like just barely tapping a little on here because I'm going to go back in here and use my water to make this a little bit thinner now. So I didn't put any more paint on the brush. I just picked up some water and I'm just going to, I want this just to fade into that blue and be really light. But I want a dark edge there. I mean a light edge. So just start working that thick paint out this way and then you start getting a gray blue color. Now you can pick up a little bit more of your paint but you want it really, um, you don't want a lot unless you're ready to start making some texture to that, but I want more color to it. So I'm gonna pick up a little tiny bit of gray too. Cause I'm starting to pick up some blue in here and I don't really want a lot of blue in here. Pick up a little gray here and make some shadows on here. got some texture to him so just think about how our moon looks when you look up at it got lots of little gray sections some up here on this again we're just using our imagination so however you want them on here going back into my white and I have this pretty runny um, for this particular one and now I'm just gonna kind of ooh, that's really white I'm mixing a little tiny bit of my gray and I'm adding a whole lot of water 
because I don't want it that white right there. Now just dot on your white just like you did your gray. And you can go back in and add some little spots of white like that in there. And they kind of work just like watercolor when you do watercolor, so it kind of spreads out. Now I'm going back to my really gray white color. This is kind of just a wash is what you want this to be. Like just a, some of that blue in there is okay to show through because uh, it just adds some detail to your, your planet here. Blue shadows. Now it's really picking up. It's really reactivated the blue, which is okay. I kind of like it in there. So we'll just let it do its thing here. spot here and it's gonna like maybe come out kind of like on the moon where it's got the crater there and use just a tiny bit of black here and I didn't clean my brush super good so it's picking up more it's like a dark gray and I just want to uh, add some of that in here where these little shadows are on my moon. Make these stand out a little bit more. My cat is attacking something in the background, so if you heard a big crash, it's just him. He's fat. He's about 13 pounds, so he needs a diet. And there you have a planet. Um, I'm going to add, I'm getting just a little bit of white. I just want a little bit more of a white edge. Up here, maybe I didn't want it that white, but I'll just work it out a little bit. think it. Don't overwork it. You can do shadows like this. You can do lines. Make it a lined planet like Jupiter. Put a big whirly thing in there. However you want to do your planet. Um, I like it. So now uh, we are going to so down here I'm going to add some landscape 
like some black, maybe just a little bit of black down here. Um, so you don't want your white in your black. Um, you can do your scar stars with white watercolor or you can do your stars with white gouache. Um, it doesn't matter which one. I'm using my gouache right now. So you want to add water to it and then you want to get it on the brush. This is going to make a mess on your hands. But you don't want like I just did and get it like super super wet. I'm going to put it in a paper towel and get a little bit of the water out of it. And then a flat toothbrush works way better because I can't hardly get to where I need to pick this up. Now you can see the paint on there and you're going to take your finger and go like this. Um, kind of hold it like this because if you get a lot of paint on there and you hold it upside down and do it this way you're gonna get big splatters on there and you know you don't want big splatters you just want stars and if you do this and you haven't finished you look at it, you think this needs more um, color pencil detail you can go right back in over the top of your stars just remember do not do that bottom part until you're done with your um, stars and stuff I like getting a lot of stars where the galaxy part is because there's a lot of stars in there And try when you get down here not to get the white paint where your white paper is. You can always take that off if you want. Um, now you have a really white finger. Just stick it in your watercolor. Water and wipe it off on your paper towel. It'll wash right off. Um, now, that was just some really light stars. So if you want to have some bigger stars here and there some really bright ones you can just take your gel pen and maybe these are like really far away planets or and just add some bigger stars in there you can also do this with your white paint and a paintbrush a really fine paintbrush and you can kind of make them have starlight if that's how you want it to look but when you look up at the night sky you see lots of different size shapes and colors so just add in some some bigger stars here and there you don't want a whole lot of them okay down here we're going to I'm going to use my black gouache for this um, and I'm going to use this number uh, 10 again and I'm not getting it super runny this time it is kind of a little bit wet but your black you'll find your black gouache wets different than your other gouache colors um, it ends up being a little bit more like watercolor and as you can see though it goes on really pretty and there's a cat hair right there in it now I want a little bit of like a mountain area here But you don't want anything in front of this. This is going to be your focal point. So keep your landscaping low, right where that meets your paper. But you can like add some hills and this is like just a silhouette of 
to your mountains. I don't think I gave myself enough black paint over here. We'll see. Just be free-handed with these. Just kind of wiggle your brush. Because it's just dark out. And this is a mountain range. And you don't need detail in that. Or maybe you're on another planet. And this is your other planet escape. And you're looking at that planet, that outer space. And, and decide where you're next. Uh, which one of those planets are you going to next? Now, Gauche dries really um, matte. It has a really matte, fit, different texture than your watercolor. And there is your mountain outer space scene. Um, you can always go back in there and add all kinds of details to those little planets. You can add more dark areas around the pink areas if you want to really bring out the pink. You could go in here and add some darker purple area just under the pink here. And just really bring that out. It doesn't take a lot of detail to add detail. Over here, could use a little. And always get you a spare piece of paper. So get a scrap piece of paper and lay it right here on your painting and then test your colors, test your blues, test your purples and find which one looks good with you always want it a little bit darker than your um, paint. And when you just add in those little bit of detail, it really makes that pop off the page. And that's how you, uh, that's how you do an outer space scene. You know, it's going to look really flat and weird while you're doing it until you add those stars. And then once you add those stars in, you have a really nice, I'm going to zoom this out a little bit. And there you have the whole scene. And as you can see, this black dries really fast. Um, and when you put it on, sometimes you get these little lighter areas. That's okay for a scene like this because you um, you have a little highlight from this shining on your land. I was going to add some little pine trees in there, but I really like how it just looks like a mountain range here in the dark. Um, you want to get really detailed. You could add a little dude standing here with a little telescope. But I really don't want to add that to this. That was my original thought was to add some mountains in here and have a little guy here with this little telescope and maybe some little pine trees off of this. But sometimes when you paint a painting, it tells you what it wants you to do. So you're going to take off your tape very carefully. You want to pull it at an angle like this so you don't tear off this paper and you always want to pull it away from your painting. In case it does start tearing this edge, uh, it doesn't start ripping off your paint coat. The washi tape works really well. This particular one is in a pack that I get on Amazon, and it's got like I have to say, it's got two rolls of this, and then it's got several. Um, it's got several different sizes, so, and Scotch also makes a washi tape in um, a really big roll, so for your bigger pictures, or you could have put this on here and used it to tape your 
uh, paper to the desk. I always have a lot of problem with this bottom edge because when I'm doing a big piece, I end up putting my elbows on there and it really sticks. So you have to just pull really easy and it comes right off of here. And then you have a nice clean edge to your beautiful artwork. Um, then you need to sign it on here somewhere. You need to remember that this is going to be behind your mat board. If you have it framed, they might leave a little bit of white if you ask them to. Um, so you don't want to sign it down here. This is black, so I'm not going to sign it there. Um, almost always I sign on this side of the painting. I don't know why, but today I'm going to put it over here because it's just a good place for it. And there you go. Now you can do an outer space. You can use greens instead of pinks. You can use reds. You can use, um, you could use different versions of blue. You can use just blue, purple, and white. You, however you want to do your universe, it's your imagination. So have fun and happy creating. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm going to try to get both of these videos up there and I will uh, try to list all these supplies I used. I know I used a whole lot and I'm probably going to miss some. Just hit, hit me in the comments and ask me what I used if I forgot something and I will let you know and try to get you um, hooked up with where you can find it. So thanks for joining me.